You limit yourself. I hear a lot of people talk about things that they're going to do or things that they was going to do. And I realized one simple fact and truth that people limit themselves. We set limits on ourselves. I, I even remember in times in my life where I have set limits on myself thinking I couldn't accomplish a certain thing unless I had this or that, unless I was placed in a certain situation and I realized I was limiting myself. You know, I realized that the greatest thing about being a human being, the greatest thing about being an individual is that growing up in my era, especially, we actually used our imaginations. <clears throat> and when it comes to playing alone or not having much, we used the best or we made the best out of the little we had. And we created things that might not be in a resemblance of what we wanted, but it got us to the place where we felt like, okay, this is where I belong. And a lot of times in life, I realize when I listen to people hold conversations, you know, I hear welders. I have heard welders who say they've been welding for 10 years, 20 years, and they don't even have no type of welding gear to do anything to strike out on their independence everything is based on a job or a union you know and sometimes you have to think to yourself like we have to a lot of people don't realize that earned income should be used to invest so that way you can take yourself out of, out of the equation you can still work and do what you want to do, but we have to realize that we can't actually do it with our own bodies, physically bodies. You know what I mean? You can only work so hard at a specific job for so long, and then you're going to have to switch it up. So if you're wrapping your whole life around a certain career, you might want to think about how long can I do this career and what do I want to use this money for while I'm able. You know, a lot of times in the rural areas and coming from coming from uh, hood environments you know the first thing we want to do is get the new car out or get the new clothes out and I can't tell you how many since I've been back in my hometown I can't tell you how many homes I have seen on the outside with nice vehicles and people I have seen dressing in nice nice attire and I actually go in their homes or see pictures of their homes or get chance to glimpse how they actually live and it's it's uh it's shocking because people put more money and time and embellishing themselves on how they look without actually investing in themselves and that's how we limit ourselves and the more I, the more i think about it it's like the saying um the broad way and the narrow way. You're going to have many people that's going to go this broad way listening to the media that influences everyone's emotions, everyone's um, opinion, so to speak, and the news, so to speak. You know, even if the information isn't completely true, or if it is true, It'll blow it up in a proportion to make a person take it over the top. You know, we would think about the situation that happened with the tissue, so to speak. Everybody remember of the so the shortage of the toilet tissue. Why was there a shortage of toilet tissue? You know what I mean? And th that always um, made me laugh and think about it because I remember times we grow up. You know, you are gonna use whatever you can find. You might not have tissues. It'd be something, towels, some type of uh, paper towel, some type of something, you know what I mean? Be back there. Some type, people might be working, have some type of napkins or something, you know. And, you know, I don't know. Growing up in my era, I witnessed, you know, just surviving. And I witnessed how you can survive on little without living above your means. And now I see people surviving and, leaving, and living above their means. And they could be doing a lot better, but they choose to 
have a image. You know, it's like a character. It's almost like literally people want to live like Hollywood, not knowing that certain actors, certain people that they look up to are not actually living the, them lives that they think they're living. So don't limit yourself if you have a career, if you have a skill. There's nothing you can't do if you put your mind to it. You know, even even this entertainment center thing that I built in the background, it was something that I seen and beside of me trying to get someone else to do it, I built it, I designed it, I seen it, and I put it, you know, I put everything together. Yes, 100%, you know, living off credit is not, you know, living free. But you know, the crazy thing is, this, the way things are going now, to move in this system, you got to have credit. But you got to also have capital. You got to have have something of value because if something happened, you can't you can't just live off like certain like I have witnessed certain jobs where it literally will beat you down to the point where if you don't make no investments, if you're just getting this money and you're just throwing this money into items and vehicles and clothes and things that's going to actually uh, be consumed or debts <clears throat> or cause you to have extremely high maintenance on them it's going to be hard for you to get over the top and you're going to be really really dependent on the system really hoping the government look out for you and we all know that this government is a capitalist you know we know we're in a capitalist country so to speak i mean it's all about the money yes it's the priorities man um it's all about getting our priorities in line and i feel like not having a strong focus not believing in yourself and not taking what you want to do really really serious like you're gonna have to really take it serious you know in whatever stage of life you in if you're young you can like if you start now there's nothing you can do you know what i mean if you're older you still you know we don't know how long we got you still can make a good run for it you can be 50 years old and get a still another good 20 years another good 15 another 10 or something you know what i mean and, and and live better you know i heard a guy say at least i can be able to live comfortable for the remainder of the time that i have left and I just believe we limit ourselves, you know what I mean? And thinking that there's only one way to do things. And don't get me wrong, life can beat you down to the point where you feel like there's only one way. And you have to just open your mind to be more open to it. Yes, the government is. You know, we have to we have to stay on the lookout for that, you know? And we have to keep from getting, turning ourselves into this, you know, economist country because things are, things are a lot, you know, deeper than what we think they are. And the way things are going is to me a way to control the people more, you know? So I feel we have to, if you really want to do something this year, figure out how to do it and if you using your earned income which you can cut back on some some expenses you know get yourself comfortable get yourself ready to to um, to really make some some serious moves because you don't know really what's going to happen you know what i mean and you want to always have some cushion you know in my personal opinion i would tell anybody and everybody to you know get your money up to have a a emergency fund or at least ten thousand dollars you know because if anything happened you can be able to move around and make a move because a lot of times you depend on the ATM. well i got this in the bank this in the bank and then when the atm hit and stuff get you know go left field you can't get nothing but three to five hundred dollars out and if everybody trying to get it you might not get that out you know Yes, um, you know, I wanted to say that because 
I just witness a lot of women who don't fully understand that they give their sons the responsibility of being the man of the house at a young age, you know, and they growing up into teens trying to fulfill this position and they watching these different men come through and or parents being pregnant or being in different relationships and they want to take care of their mom and they tend to put themselves in situations that can harm them and the mom don't fully understand it. Sometimes, you know, the mom does and she wants someone to feel sorry for, you know what I mean? So it can go both ways, but I feel like for those who are not conscious of what they're doing, we have to keep from crippling our young youth by putting them in situations that can actually make them or cause them to make decisions that they normally would have made. What's good? What's good? Checking in, checking in. What's good, bro? So, you know, I feel like we have to be more conscious of how we deal with our youth. We have to be more conscious of the examples and things we do in front of them. I remember growing up, the things that I seen, you know, we tend to put our parents on a real, real high pedestal. And the, re and the reality of it is most of them are teens and kids, just like we was trying to figure it out. Didn't really know what they was doing. They just knew they had to take care of the child. And we have to realize that a lot of the things they did that we written in stone, it wasn't good examples, but it what they had to do at the time, at that moment. So, you know, I feel like it's not my place to, you know, I don't want to put myself in a position to say, oh, be like me, because I don't want to say be like me. But I will say I can give you a skill to help you use to help a person to turn into who they need to be. You know, I feel like certain people we meet in life is to, to shine us up. Certain people is meant to build us up. You know, certain people are meant to break you down if you're too prideful to get you back focused, you know, and I believe certain people are not meant to hold on to for a lifetime and certain people are. So, you know, I believe that I would rather my life be used however a person feel they, they can use it, you know, from from the examples, from building, from fabricating, from talking, from sharing my experiences. But I believe that if a person can use it anyway and gain something positive out of the things I have experienced, then, you know, my life wasn't in vain. Yes, stand up, stand up. It's coming soon, it's coming soon. You know, um, I just got to get a few things lined out, you know, especially with, you know, uh, finishing what I got going on with this house and um, got a couple things with my uh, son I got to lined out. And uh, in the meantime, I'm, you know, working on getting a, a business, things established. You know, it's so much... So many things you can do, but one thing I can say, don't overwhelm yourself when you have a lot on your plate. Just chip off, you know, work at things as you can. And there's nothing wrong with dreaming big. Because some people think, well, I can't dream that big because I'm only right here. It's okay to dream big. You know, I, every night when I was in prison, I dreamed big about the things I wanted to do, how I wanted to live, what I wanted to look like, how I wanted to drive, the type of women I wanted to be with. You know what I'm saying? I thought about all those good things because I felt like, in order to keep me motivated and keep me from getting trapped in there, I had to think of things how I wanted it to be. And even though we might be in certain situations in life, I think it's good for us to think of ourselves where we want to be at. You know what I mean? So don't limit yourself. Think of where you want to be. If you want to be in this certain place or this certain house or this certain part of the country, I don't feel like there is anything wrong with it. You know what I mean? But you can't limit yourself by doing so. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Because there are a lot of distractions. And there will always be a lot of distractions. You know what I mean? I feel like there will always be things that will keep us from focusing on us. Keep us from focusing on, on, on the truth and what's really at hand instead of being blinded by what exactly um, the media throws in front of us. And we think that, oh, this is the truth, you know. 
like, you know, getting caught up with not realizing that in the man's eyes, he's after all people. You know, he, he just want to make sure his him and his family, but everybody go. So a lot of times some people try to look down on you. But if you are punching the clock and you inside of the system, you know, bigger than them. If they're sitting in the office or you sweeping the floor, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all on the same page, you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, one slave, every slave got a different task and a different duty. You know what I mean? Everybody ain't in the field. Everybody don't get dirty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that don't mean you ain't no slave, though. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I realize the position that we're in. And we just have to be humble and realize that if we're going to take ourselves somewhere this year, you know, 2022. We're going to have to stop limiting ourselves, family. We're going to have to stop throwing hurdles in, in our own path. You know what I mean? From allowing, you know, my the old folks used to say this from the South. Man, don't allow your eyes to overload your ass now. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that was one of them things like, you know, we can see things and think we need this and want this and want this. And those things... Or people that we feel that we need and want can actually put us in a situation that can put us in some chains. What's up, family? What's up, family? How you doing? Checking in, family. What's going on? Um, actually, man, uh, I've been growing my goatee. I actually need to rebraid it. It's a little straggly right now. I've been working, so I kind of let it go. But I need to rebraid it. But I've been uh, growing it now since... Since 2010, hold up, I take that back. Since 2011, yes, since 2011, it's been growing now since the end of 2011. I actually started growing it back in, uh, in October of 2011. Uh, I started back growing it, so I've been having it, you know, swinging since then. Uh, if I'm, um, but most definitely, man, like I say, I feel like we just got to. Stop limiting ourselves on what we're going to do, man. And, and, I got to say this. Stand on our word, family. If you say something, stand on it. Be a man about it. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't say one thing and then come up with a slick excuse to get out of the responsibility to, to look out or to stand on what you say you was going to do. And that's anything. Dealing with your, especially especially with your kids if you want your kids to respect you and and in this day and age with the way things are kids picking up quick if you're going to show them the love showing with actions if i remember my daughter saying something one day and i didn't even ask her this her and her mom was talking about something and she said i'm gonna ask my daddy and she was like don't, you know, bother your daddy with this, this, and this, or whatever. And she was like, well, he even going to tell me yes or no. But one thing I know about daddy, he ain't going to never say he got it and he don't. If he going to be like, I can do it or I can't. But if he can do it, he going to let me know. And that let me feel good because she know that if I say, hey, I'm going to take care of it, it's going to be taken care of. You know what I mean? So it felt good to know that. Even though she's a, you know, a young woman, she understand she understands that daddy keeps his word. And I think that that's a good thing for a man to do. Keep your word to the best ability. I mean, you know, I remember days waiting on my dad, literally, you know, waiting on him to come and get me. And, and mama saying, you know, it's going to be all right. You, you'll see him another day. And it makes your heart a certain way. It makes you a certain type of person after you grow up and you experience that and you tend to get a little cold in arrows, you know what I mean? In, 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 in ways. So, you know, I understand, you know, how it is. And, and, and the best thing I can say, I would like to prevent that from happening, prevent us from, you know, losing, prevent us from losing that, that pureness, you know what I'm saying, that we can get from from good examples, you know what I mean, and from being a and from being that example. So, you know, push yourself, family. You know what I mean. Whatever you whatever you're trying to do, you, you can do it. One thing I realized uh, a long
long time ago. If if another man can do it, if he can create it, if he can build it, if he can put it up, so can I. So can you. You know, you can actually do anything that you you know put your mind to. So don't think that you can't do something, family. You know what I mean? So it's it's all about getting your mind together and mentally being prepared to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. But we have to push ourselves and start limiting ourselves. Like there are so many people I have heard like in the last week, just with excuses like of why they can't do something. And, and I'm like, you know, and, and a lot of it be like, it don't even be, legitimate you know what i mean it's like man that's a straight excuse i mean you can really do better than that but a lot of times we don't look at it like that family we just try to find ways <laughs> yeah 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 i do um it's crazy because that it was an important day for me you know what i mean and um and actually, I lost my mom almost exactly a year to that date. So I started growing it on October the 25th. And I believe my mom passed on the 27th. I have to look it up. She passed on the 20-something of October a year later. So um, that's why I really, really remember it. But, um, you know... It's just humbling, man, to, it's humbling to be here, family, because, you know, mom passed in here, and the house was left a mess, and it was, you know, I don't know those who have, you know, seen some of the mama renovations uh, videos, but when I first came here, you know, it was a mess, family, you know, and it was hurting to actually see it in the condition that it was, and I didn't even know if I could actually bring it back. I had to get some second opinions. Yes, yes, it's very important to be a man of your word. Um, I think it's very important to be a man of your word when you're dealing with people and when you're dealing with business and family. Nah, I actually, um, I just let it go, man. Um, when I calmly let it down, you know, I have some little hairs that, you know, tend to um, break off or whatever. Uh, but I was, I have had it trim, you know, at times cutting my dead ends and whatnot. But it tends to grow. Uh, one time I actually was going, when I first started, I was going to dread it up and just let it be two dreads. You know what I mean? But I couldn't get in the lock right. So I had to start braiding them right because how, you know, thin my hair, how my hair is, it's like curly and thin. So it's like not real kinky. So it couldn't like lock like I wanted to. I got some partners that got that thick hair. It'll lock. My stuff wouldn't lock right. So it looked better braided. So now I just got to go back and do some braids. But um, I just let it go, bro. I Actually, it's pretty long, though. You know what I mean? I had to take it down and straighten it, but it's pretty long. I don't know exactly how long it is now. But it's pretty long, though. I at least say probably eight inches, you know, or so. Maybe a little longer. Um, it's amazing, though, because I had someone say, it's crazy you say something about it because someone asked me about having patience and was like, man, I can tell you got a lot of dedication and patience because you allowed it to grow like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Growth and development, man. It's most definitely about the growth and development, bro. It's about how you put your thing together. So everybody got to go a different path, man. Uh, some people can, some people can't. You know what I mean? But I will say this. Uh, braiding them allowed it to grow faster. Like once I braided it, it kind of like pulled on it and it made it grow. At first when I was just letting it be, it was growing. But I think when I was by having it, pulling it and you know, and then I grease it and stuff, you know, I think that really helps it uh, develop a lot uh, better. So, you know, and crazy. I'm going to tell you something about this, though. It's crazy uh, that we even talking about my goatee because I remember <laughs> when I was in prison, family, I told a couple people, I was like, man, when I get out, I'm going to do something unique, man, with my 
when the way I grow my, you know, my beard, it was like, what you gonna do, man? You know, I'm just talking because in there we couldn't wear no beard. You can only wear a mustache, and uh, so I wore a little mustache because you couldn't have one. Then when I got out, I don't even wear one. I cut it off and just wear my goatee. But I said, man, I'm gonna grow my beard, man, just at the bottom. I'm gonna grow it right here. I'm gonna let it get long and braided. It's gonna be a little different. People, are, man, that's a, it. Ain't gonna grow. How you know it's gonna grow long? And I was like, hey, I don't know, but that's how I'm gonna have it. And just so happened. As y'all see, it started growing pretty good. Yeah, man, like I say, man, I just like to put a little highlight on certain stories. And this is just things this to remind you that it's okay to be in a messed up situation or not be in the situation you want to be in and still think positive and still think uh, creative on how you want to be and how you want to do things and how you want to live. I mean, even though you're not even though you don't have it, you know, I remember kids playing with mud pads when I was growing up and and they was talking about how they're going to make real burgers. You know what I mean? So sometimes they didn't have the the kitchen. You know, I bless, you know, me and my uh, wife was able to bless my grandbaby or my granddaughter with a kitchen. And she got a nice kitchen family. She got the, you know, the. The little food and fruits and stuff you put in the refrigerator. She got a little microwave, a coffee pot. Like, it's dope. Like, it's a nice little setup. And um, she like it. And I remember growing up, I was like, man, you know what? I never seen nobody with one of them growing up. I never seen no no kid, no little good. Now, it might be some somewhere, but never when I was growing up. So, it made me, it was cool to bless my, grand, my grandbaby. You know what I mean? A third generation for me. So that I felt like that was awesome. <laughs> You've been letting it go, huh? I feel you. I feel you just letting it grow. Uh, so, you know, I, I just feel like, like I said, man, I like coming live and talking about certain issues because, I don't know, I feel like if someone don't talk about certain things, then who going to talk about them? And even though it doesn't get a lot of traction in certain areas when we release certain things, you know, sometimes I feel like you should do it anyway. You shouldn't look for the glamour in it. You should just look for the, the message that you're trying to give. Sometimes it might be blurry, but it's all about, to me, the words, all about the, the meaning behind the words. That's what changes. I done had some serious messages and some things been said to me that I use to this day. And it was the way that they delivered it to me. And it, and it, and it wasn't like an angel was coming out the sky. It was just the way that they said it and how I felt. And that love and that expression changed some things. <laughs> What's going on now? What's going on? Um... You know, it just uh, it's just ironic how how things happen, family. You know what I mean? But I remember, you know, not being able to have certain things and just being able to bless my my grandkids and my kids. You know, and even though that I don't have the relationship right now that I want to have with my son, that's like a situation and one of the main reasons too that I'm here back in Arkansas on top of uh, renovating my mom's house is to start getting more uh, visitations rights with my son. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, what's, what's so crazy. I realize that a son, a child, male or female needs their mother, but they also equally need their father. And in certain ages, I believe they need one more than they need the other. And when it comes to a son, when he started getting, like my son is 10 right now. So, you know, now it's starting to get that age. By the time he get to 12, is really when I want to, you know, I really need to be there all the time. He's 10. So I'm not trying to remove him from her. I just want to be able to see him more. You know, I want to have that relationship with him too. I want to watch him grow too. And that's something that I don't get a chance to see that that's a burden on me because I don't get a chance to see that. And I don't think that's right. You know what I mean? But, you know, it is what it is. But my goal 
my goal is to bridge that gap with him. And then, you know, I know that, you know, in, in a couple of years, you know, uh, he's going to start getting older and want to be around me more where I can be able to really teach him something. And it's ironically that from the age of 12 to 24, I like to say that from the age of 12 and 24, statistically, is when our black youth either end up dead, in prison, or addicted to a harmful drug. So that's when I most definitely know I got to step in. So I'm making preparations now, family, because I don't want you know him to go down the path I went at all, period, point blank, period. You know what I mean? So whatever I got to do now, I'm cool with it because I'm knowing that I got to keep him from going because you got to think, family, I was... 15 years old, I was 15 years old, family, facing a life sentence. I was 15 years old facing a life sentence, family, facing a life sentence. There's no way I can let my kid or anyone else's kid go down that path if I can give them some information. And I'm knowing that one main reason why I went that way, because I didn't have the guide. I didn't have the... I didn't have the person there to give me the information. You know, my father wasn't like me. He wasn't very verbal like that. You know what I mean? If his verbalness wasn't nice verbal, <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't, you know, I can't. But now our relationship is a lot different. I, I do want to say uh, kudos to my dad because he is a great, great grandfather. You know what I mean? He's good to him. They, they love to be around him. And that makes me feel good because... Sometimes things you don't get right things with your child and there might be the grandchild that you get things right with. Life is, you know, life tends to go different ways and I'm humble with that. But while I'm still breathing, I want to do what I can. So a lot of the things that I do and invest now in the youth and really helping them, I, my, my one of my big passions is because I want to do it for my son and I can't. And since I can't be there for him like I want to, even though I send him things and I try to make sure he's good, I can't be there for him. It's my goal to do that for anyone else that I can. Like a lot of the younger generations that surround me, I can help those that surround me. So there's no reason for me to be, you know, for me, you know, no, there's no reason for me to be bitter or hateful or say you know what since i can't see my kid i'm not giving nobody no knowledge i ain't helping nobody you know I, whatever happened you get your get your older homie to help you you know and a lot of older homies ain't doing nothing you know what i mean i ain't gonna i ain't gonna be like this i'm cool with it you know what i mean i'm cool with helping who i can help and i ain't got no problem with pulling nobody coattail up if they get go left field hey man you know i've been there too you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i've been there too like i've been so you know i I feel like in order to teach someone, you got to be real and it got to come from a real place. So that's 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 my goal. And that's literally why I'm doing this. I see I missed some messages. So I want to come back up here and check everybody's messages. I see a few popped up. What's good, King? What's good? I hear you preach, fam. <laughs> You know what? Things are going to build up as far as the subscribers, man. You know what? I don't do a lot of... I just be me. And, you know, sometimes being you and being different is not a popular thing to certain people. And sometimes the light don't get shined on a person until they keep putting the work in. So I'm going to keep putting the work in, family. But like I said on another video, my goal is to get 10,000 subscribers this year. So help me get there. Woo, woo, woo. We're going to get there, man. We're going to get there. We're going to get to that 10,000 10, subscribers. So, you know, and I think that's a small number because to me, I know it's 10,000 independent welders, 10,000 free cons that's out, uh, 10,000 adolescents that's just got out of juvie that need to get some good game or some people that's about to get ready to go that need it. I know it is in America. Come on now. I know someone is out there, so, you know, tune in to me, check in to me, make sure you subscribe and share. But uh, the goal is, man, is to help as many as we can. You know what I mean? Appreciate, appreciate for showing the love and hitting that like button. I appreciate the love, most definitely. Uh, like I say, I just wanted to check in. Didn't want to keep y'all that long. Like I say, I was just coming in and talking about 
Uh, don't limit yourself. I feel like coming into this year, that's going to be the main thing that's going to keep us from being um, who we want to be and accomplishing the goals we want to accomplish. It's limiting ourselves. And we all fall down, family. We all get weary. We get tired. So don't overdo it. You know what I mean? We're not Superman and Superwoman for real. You know what I'm saying? We know we all got health and, and different things. We all getting older for those who getting older, so we have to take care of ourselves. So, you know, it's like um today I was actually had a uh job to go to and you know I got attacked by a dog. So I woke up this morning, man, my finger and my face was swollen and I was hurting. I was like, man, I can't do it. I'm telling you, I was a lot swollen than I am now and it went down a lot now. But I was like, man, you know what? I can't do it. You know what I mean? If I did it, I felt like I'd mess around and hurt myself even more. And, you know, and sometimes you got to ask yourself, is, 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 is it all about the money sometime? Or, you know, is it about, you know, recuperating, getting yourself together? And that's another reason why I stress independence. So, so that way when things come like that, you don't even sweat that because there's always going to be a way for you because you're going to always make a way for yourself. And that's why I say don't limit yourself. So you have to plant seeds and make things available and make things better for yourself by investing in yourself. So um, just wanted to say that, man. Like I say, it has been one of those few days, a, a nice coming into the New Year's. It has been interesting. And um, my goal is is to keep thriving and pushing, man. And, and like I say, lead by example, man. A lot of things I share is not only to to talk to you, but it's to remind myself of what I need to do, how how I need to stay focused, how I need to continue and keep going on, going on, going on in the midst of when things go left field. You know what I mean? So just wanted to say, push yourself. Don't limit yourself. Uh, as a wise man always told me, you can learn more from someone else's examples and someone else's life than you can from your own. So sit back and watch some other people. You don't have to experience everything yourself personally to get that information out of it as someone else had. So instead of you bumping your head, watch some other people bump their head so that way you don't have to and keep getting your hog on from Black Phoenix.